Wow, SpaceX has just unveiled the full scope of what's coming with the next Starship flight, and the details are nothing short of stunning. From bold upgrades to surprising changes in design and testing strategy, this mission is shaping up to be one of the most pivotal moments in the program's history. There are breakthroughs to celebrate, challenges to overcome, and plenty of developments that could redefine how we think about the future of Starship. But while excitement builds in Texas, not every company is enjoying smooth progress. Over at Firefly, the Alpha rocket is facing fresh setbacks, with delays stacking up and a recent test ending in failure. These struggles highlight the contrast between rapid advancement and the harsh realities of rocket development, reminding us that in this industry, progress never comes easy. So buckle up, because in today's episode of Great SpaceX, we're diving into all of it, from the thrilling surprises from SpaceX's upcoming flight to the turbulent road ahead for Firefly Alpha. Speaking of surprises, the countdown to Starship Flight 11 is picking up speed. The hardware is coming together at a remarkable pace, and with that progress, new details about the mission timeline and objectives are beginning to surface. What everyone has been waiting for, though, is the official word from SpaceX. And now, those long-anticipated updates are finally starting to arrive. On September 29th, SpaceX announced on X, Starship's 10th flight test took a significant step forward in developing the world's first fully reusable launch vehicle. Next up, Flight 11 of Starship is targeted to launch as early as Monday, October 13th. That is right. The launch date has now been confirmed, and it perfectly aligns with the first day in the local Notice to Mariners launch window announced earlier. In addition to this, SpaceX specified the exact launch time as 6.15 p.m. Central Standard Time on October 13th. If everything goes according to plan, Flight 11 will take off on the same day that Flight 5 did, the historic flight that successfully caught the booster for the very first time, ushering in the era of Starship's partial reusability. Over the past year, SpaceX has clearly made major strides. So, mark your calendars, because this is a mission worth remembering. Now, let's walk through all the details for Flight 11. SpaceX stated that the upcoming flight will build on the successful demonstrations from Starship's 10th flight test. The mission will include experiments to gather data for the next generation Super Heavy booster, stress testing Starship's heat shield, and demonstrating maneuvers that will mimic the upper stage's final approach for a future return to the launch site. As many anticipated, Flight 11 is designed to be highly experimental. This will be the final flight of the current Starship version, serving as the bridge to the future fleet of upgraded vehicles and new missions, such as catching the entire rocket stack. Now let's go ahead and break it down phase by phase. According to SpaceX, the booster on this flight test previously flew on Flight 8 and will launch with 24 flight-proven Raptor engines. Its primary test objective will be demonstrating a unique landing burn engine configuration planned for use on the next generation Super Heavy. It'll attempt this while on a trajectory to an offshore landing point and will not return to the launch site for catch. This means that out of 33 engines, 24 are being reused. Only 9 engines will be brand new, and and that includes the two middle ring engines that failed during the boost back burn on a previous mission, although one of those did restart during the landing burn later. The additional seven engines are being replaced, most likely because SpaceX identified them as potential risks. The major highlight is the landing test. The booster will once again land in the sea rather than being caught, although many speculated that October 13th might signal the first attempt at a catch, safety and success remain the top priorities, especially on a test-driven mission like like this. For the burn process, 13 engines will ignite to begin the landing burn as seen in earlier flights. After the initial deceleration, most will shut down, leaving only a select few engines to guide the vehicle. On past flights, three inner gimbal engines were kept for navigation. This time, however, five engines will handle the task, which likely includes three inner ring engines and two middle ring engines. This change is significant. Booster V3 will rely on five engines for final descent, which adds redundancy in case of spontaneous engine shutdowns. By testing this configuration now, SpaceX is preparing for greater reliability in future catch attempts with the Mechazilla arms. Finally, for the terminal landing phase, a three-engine configuration will reignite to complete a controlled hover just above the ocean surface before shutting down and dropping into the water. This marks a shift away from the two engine landings we saw previously. SpaceX summarized the goal, which is to measure the real-world vehicle dynamics as engines shut down, 
while transitioning between the different phases. Turning to the upper stage, Flight 11 will carry forward several objectives. The vehicle will once again deploy eight Starlink simulator satellites, satellites on a suborbital trajectory. These satellites will later self-destruct during re-entry. In addition, an in-space relight of the engines will be attempted, continuing the critical work of proving Starship's orbital capabilities. More importantly, SpaceX has emphasized that this mission will prepare Starship for future returns to the launch site. Catching the upper stage is one of the most anticipated milestones expected to debut as early as next year, possibly between Flight 13 and Flight 15. The most daring element of the test is the heat shield. According to SpaceX, for re-entry, tiles have been removed from Starship to intentionally stress test vulnerable areas across the vehicle. Several of the missing tiles are in areas where tiles are bonded to the vehicle and do not have a backup ablative layer. This is a bold decision. Many expected that the heat shield would finally be tested in a fully installed state. Instead, SpaceX has deliberately left weak spots exposed. This move demonstrates confidence that the vehicle can survive even if tiles are lost during flight, a realistic scenario for future missions. In addition, Starship will attempt to replicate the trajectory it would take when returning to Starbase. SpaceX explained, SpaceX explained the final phase of Starship's trajectory on Flight 11 includes a dynamic banking maneuver and will test subsonic guidance algorithms prior to a landing burn and splashdown in the Indian Ocean. In simpler terms, the ship will rehearse guidance and maneuvering steps such as banking, flipping, and steering into a controlled landing zone. These are essential rehearsals for eventual returns and catches at Starbase. When we step back, Flight 11 represents much more than just another test. It's the culmination of lessons from the first 10 flights and a forward-looking mission that sets the stage for the new generation of starships. The focus is now shifting to catching both the booster and the ship, which will officially achieve full reusability, the holy grail of rocketry. Flight 11 will stress test engines, push the heat shield further, and simulate return maneuvers. It's a high-stakes rehearsal, but it's also the logical next step in SpaceX's rapid development cycle. With all of this in mind, the excitement is undeniable. This flight will not just test hardware, it'll shape the roadmap for future milestones that aim to revolutionize how humanity accesses space. So, are you confident that Flight 11 will succeed? Share your prediction in the comments. Personally, I believe the mission has a 90% chance of success. SpaceX still has a significant amount of work ahead before the next Starship flight can take place. The most pressing priority is completing final work on the vehicles. Super Heavy has already finished nearly all preparations with, with only the installation of the flight termination system possibly remaining. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage is undergoing inspections inside Mega Bay 2. It'll soon need to be outfitted with its payload as well as the flight termination system to ensure full readiness. At the launch site, additional adjustments must be completed quickly to prepare for the arrival of rocket hardware. Every system will need to be inspected thoroughly to minimize the risk of last-minute aborts. Alongside direct launch preparations, supporting infrastructure is also racing to catch up. The Massey test site, for instance, must be brought back online as soon as possible to handle upcoming prototype trials. The first V3 booster B18 is approaching the end of its production phase and is expected to roll out for testing soon. Following that, the first V3 ship, S39, will likely be completed within a month. Launchpad 2 is another critical element that needs to be up and operational quickly. Its testing campaign has to be accelerated because Pad 2 will play a key role not only in supporting Starship launches, but also in enabling the two-stage catching system. Taken together, these tasks mean the period surrounding Flight 11 will be marked by non-stop activity, both in preparation and in the months following. While SpaceX continues to march onward, Firefly Aerospace has encountered new setbacks with its Alpha rocket. Following the mission failure in April, the FAA approved the rocket's return to service after the company addressed the issues. Firefly quickly resumed preparations and scheduled a fresh start. However, during a stage test on the 29th, the Alpha booster exploded at the company's Briggs, Texas facility. Firefly has not released any footage of the incident, but on X, the company confirmed during testing at Firefly's facility in Briggs, Texas, the first stage of Firefly's Alpha Flight 7 rocket experienced an event that resulted in a loss of the stage. The update added that safety procedures were followed all personnel remained unharmed, and no surrounding facilities were impacted. Still, the delay now appears far more serious. Firefly has not provided a cause for the mishap, but it emphasized its commitment to testing as part of its development approach. 
Regular testing is part of Firefly's philosophy. We test each critical component, engine, and vehicle stage to ensure it operates within our flight requirements before we ship to the launch pad. We learn from each test to improve our designs and build a more reliable system. The company promised to share more details on its path forward in the near future. This failure casts further doubts on the Alpha rocket's reliability, particularly in its first stage. During the April mission, the booster explodes shortly after separation, which damaged the upper stage engine nozzle, reduced thrust, and ultimately caused payload loss. Firefly attributed that issue to heat buildup from a phenomenon called plume-induced flow separation, a finding accepted by the FAA. However, the September test raises questions about whether those problems were fully resolved or whether deeper issues exist within the vehicle's design or production. Out of Alpha's six launches so far, two have failed outright, two have only partially succeeded, and just two have been fully successful. The coming months will be critical in determining whether Firefly can stabilize its systems, or if Alpha risks falling further behind in the competitive small lift launch market. In any case folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.